The single most important change in Ionic 4 is the way navigation works. If you're migrating from version 3, then you're probably familiar with Ionic's nav controller and the ion nav component, but they've been deprecated in favor of the Angular router, which is far more powerful. In today's video, you'll learn everything you need to know to be successful with the Angular router in Ionic 4, and I'll show you a few advanced techniques that you can start putting to use right away. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can find the source code at angularfirebase.com. So prior to Ionic 4, the framework used its own built-in nav controller and component to handle the navigation between pages in a push-pop style way that you would see on a mobile application. I'd like to point out that the nav controller will still technically work in Ionic 4, so you might see some tutorials out there on the web that use it, but it's not the preferred way to handle navigation and will likely not be possible in the future. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you know nothing about the Angular router, so we'll start with the absolute basics and then build up to some pretty advanced concepts towards the end. And also make sure to watch my Angular Routing Basics video, which is very relevant to the topic at hand here. And before we do anything, I want to give you a pro tip, and that is to install the Augury plugin for Angular. You can find it on the Chrome store, and it will help you a ton by visualizing your actual router tree. So you can see here that everything kind of starts from the app component, then we have a couple of lazy loaded pages, and so on. This is a pretty basic setup here, but it becomes very valuable as your complexity grows. I've gone ahead and generated a brand new Ionic 4 app that's using the tabs template. And when we open this application up, the first place we'll go is into the app directory and then open the app routing module. The only thing you'll ever really change in this file is the routes array, which is an array of objects where you define the actual routes in your application. There are three basic types of routes that you can define. Your typical vanilla route would just be one that loads a component, then in Ionic, we have lazy loaded routes, which are automatically generated with the Ionic CLI, as we'll see here in a minute. Then you might also set up a redirect to take one path and point it to some other path. If we look inside the app routing module here, you'll notice that it has the load children property that points to a different module in this app. That's an example of lazy loading, which is a really important concept with Ionic. When you generate a page with the Ionic CLI, it will be lazy loaded by default. And what that means is it's using a feature from Webpack called code splitting. And the reason we lazy load things all comes down to performance for progressive web apps. This pattern allows us to split our code into smaller chunks, which will give us faster initial page load speeds on the web. So let's look at something a little more practical. Let's go ahead and generate a new page, and then we'll do some routing to and from that page. So I'll say ionic generate page, and I'll call this the animals page. Then you'll notice it sets up a new path in that routes array. Then it adds the load children property to point to the module that has that lazy loaded code. So that's going to render the animals page component when the animals path gets activated, but where does that page actually get displayed? Whenever a certain route is activated, it will render the page within a specific outlet. By default, you have this ion router outlet inside the app component. So when we navigate to different pages or components, it will render that code specifically where this outlet lives. This ion router outlet is specifically for Ionic, but it's just like the regular Angular router with some additional internal things going on to handle the transition animations between pages. Now let's take a look at how we might navigate from our home page to the newly created animals page. And it's actually really simple. All we have to do is set up a button and give it an href attribute and then have it point to whatever path we defined. If you're familiar with the Angular router, you probably know that hrefs don't really work and you need to use the router link directive. In Ionic, it works a little bit different. If you're defining the link on an actual Ionic component, it will intercept that link and use the Angular router as it should appropriately. And as far as I can tell, you can still use router link on non-Ionic components without any drawbacks. As you can see in our demo here, if we click on the animals link, it will navigate to that page with the nice back and forth animation. But a lot of times in your app, you won't just be able to navigate with a basic link like this. You'll need to do it in a more programmatic kind of way. To demonstrate this, I'll create another Ionic button, but instead of using an href link, I'll go ahead and use a click event and handle it with a method inside of the component TypeScript. This will actually behave exactly like this href link, but we'll be handling everything from directly inside our component, which gives us a lot more control to do things programmatically. Angular exposes the router to us as a service, which means we can inject it in the constructor and use it in any one of our components. There's a number of different things you can do with the router, but for now we'll just use it to navigate from one URL to another. 
Once we have it injected, it's as easy as calling this .router.navigate, and then it expects an array where each item in that array is a URL segment. In this case, we just want to navigate to the animal's path, so we pass that in as the first item in the array. Then if we go into the demo, you can see it navigates and looks exactly like our previous link did. But the important takeaway here is that you can access the router to navigate by whatever kind of code and logic that you want to write. And just another little side note here, instead of navigate, you can call navigate by URL and pass in a URL string directly if that's easier for you. So now that we know how to move from one path to the next, let's go ahead and see how we can use dynamic data in our routes. A common use case here is when you have a database full of items and each of those items has an ID. You might start by showing a list, then the user navigates to a route that has a specific item ID in it, and then you pull that ID from the database and show its data in the UI. So we already have an animals page. Let's go ahead and generate another component that's specifically for showing a specific animal ID, assuming that we have that data in a database somewhere. One pro tip here is to nest your components inside of a lazy loaded page, and it will automatically add the route as a child route of that component and keep it lazy loaded so it's performant within the app. So if we go into our animals module, you can see that it now has this profile component in there and we can create our own child routes for it. So the root path is just blank, which would be animals because that was declared in the app routing module. Then if we want to route to a dynamic ID, we'll set up another path here where the path is colon ID and then it renders the profile component. So it'll be the profile component's responsibility to check the ID and then pull the data from the database. So now let's go ahead and route to this component, just like we would with a regular href link. The path will be animals slash whatever ID happens to be there. In this case, I'll just pass in some random ID. If we route to this ID in the UI, you can see that it renders the profile component. And any URL that's in front of animals will render it, but it's still not very dynamic because we're not doing anything dynamic with the ID. To be able to extract the ID from the URL, we're going to use a service in Angular called activated route. So we'll jump into our profile component, and then in the constructor, we'll inject activated route. We can get our parameters as a plain string or an observable if we care about future changes to it. For this example, we'll just go ahead and get it as a snapshot, which means we'll read it once when the component's initially rendered, and we don't really care what happens to that value in the future. So we'll say this route snapshot dot param map get ID. And just so we can visually verify this, I'll set up the ID as a property on the component, and then we'll display that in the UI and watch it update dynamically. If we go back to our demo now, you can see that every time we navigate to a different URL, we get a different ID displayed in the UI. So in other words, we're extracting data from the URL and using it in our actual application code. The next big topic I want to talk about is quite a bit more complex, but a lot of people have asked me how the new tabs template in Ionic 4 works. Even though the nav controller is deprecated, Ionic still supports a push-pop style of navigation. But it does so using a thing called named outlets with the Angular router. Earlier in the video we looked at the Ionic router outlet, but what I haven't mentioned yet is that you can use multiple outlets within the same app. Basically, you can create secondary outlets that have the specific name and then render content within that secondary view based on a route change. So in this case here, we have a path and an outlet. And if we look in the HTML, we can see that we have multiple router outlets on this page, each one with its own name property. The reason we have our routing set up this way for the tabs page is so that we can show the actual tab bar at the bottom of the view whenever a route is changed. The big thing to keep in mind is that if you want to show the tab bar at the bottom, you want to route to one of the secondary outlets and not the root outlet. The root outlet will take up the entire viewport, while one of the secondary outlets will still show the tabs at the bottom. The final thing I want to talk about in this video are Angular router guards. Guards are a special type of service in Angular that implement a method that can be understood by the router. In most cases, you'll implement the canActivate method, which returns a boolean that determines whether or not a route can be activated. I'd say the most common use case is when you have user authentication and you want to lock down certain routes based on the user's authentication state. When we generate a guard from the command line, it will generate a file that looks like this, and everything here is basically just boilerplate, except that we want to implement this canActivate method and have it return a boolean or something that resolves to a boolean, like a promise or an observable. 
A common pattern I see is to inject the Angular router inside of a guard. Then we can redirect the user if they're trying to access a route that they shouldn't be activating. To demonstrate how this works, I'm going to set up a Boolean variable here called logged in, and it will just have a 50-50 chance of being true or false. If the user is not logged in, then we'll want to redirect them back to the root URL, or maybe you want to redirect them to a sign up page. And then we'll return the Boolean value from this method. If it's true, then the route will be activated, but if it's false, then it will be blocked and the component will never get rendered. The great thing about guards is that we can write them once and then apply them to as many routes as we need. They provide really good code reusability. For example, we can go into our app routing module, and if we want to protect our animal's route, we can add the can activate property and then add the auth guard to it. And you can even add multiple guards to a single route. If you watch closely here, I'm console logging the authentication state from our guard in the console, and you'll notice that when it's false, nothing will happen with the route change, but when it's true, it will actually navigate to the requested route. In about a week, we'll expand on all these routing concepts with my new Ionic 4 Firebase course, where we'll build out a variety of different real-world features that use these routing concepts. If this video helped you, like and subscribe, and if you want to get access to that course for free, consider upgrading to a pro membership at angularfirebase.com. Not only will you get access to the upcoming course, but you'll also get access to a whole bunch of exclusive content designed to help you build and ship your app faster. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.